like to say good morning to all the brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High have made. We should find a way to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Greetings to all of the brothers and sisters. No matter what walk of life you come from, no matter what religious construct that you are a part of, be it you're a Christian, be it you're a Hebrew Israelite, be it you're an Islamic man, we ain't going to drive these things home uh, enough that uh, righteousness will never be made manifest through religion. Religion is just simply a methodology or a particular way of doing things uh, repetitiously. So when, I, when, I, when I do something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, according to the traditions of men, according to how we've been raised, then I become religious in that. And religion can't be confined to what we come to know as a religious construct. You can be religious taking your trash out. You can religiously uh, have a hellish attitude. Any, anything that you do, because what a religion is, is a precept that or a tradition that has been passed down from one generation to the next, whereby people begin to govern their lives. Shouts out to you, King Matthew Menard, and to all the other brothers and sisters out there. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Once again, we want to say thank you to all of our brothers and sisters that are still mindful, even though we don't have to ask nobody for anything. We want to say thank you to brothers and sisters that still send gifts and say, hey, put this to whoever need it. We still got people calling, you know what I mean? We had one of our young brothers to call yesterday, and... Uh, and I tell these young brothers and sisters when they get in trouble that the only thing that we require, don't thank me. Thank the brothers and sisters in social media land or on Facebook that make contributions because that is the only way that we can help and assist people when we collectively come together and build something, then we are able to do it. But when you're one person, you're not able to meet the needs of uh, many people like that. So we ask the brothers and sisters. And so... Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, when you become a beneficiary of uh, some assistance, when God's hand of provision shows up in your life, the only thing that we ask is that you will simply go on Facebook and, and put uh, tag me on my page, sending thank you to the brothers and sisters uh, who have made contributions. Uh, so you're not giving thanks to me. That also boomerangs back and causes brothers and sisters to be encouraged as they see their blessings reaching places that they didn't even know was there. They see people praising God for something that they have done. And that's what the Bible says. Let your good work show before men that they shall give your Father in heaven glory. So when somebody receives a blessing, on behalf of somebody that have uh, planted a seed or offered a gift somewhere, they don't even know where it come from. They just thank God. All praises. Thank the Most High. And that's the message that came back yesterday. The message that came back yesterday was, man, I was down to the very last day, and they was about to shut my stuff off, and I need to do this for my work, and, and, I, and, and now it's done. I said, well, you know, the old folks used to have a saying that he may not come when you want him, but he will be there right on time. And so, um, you know, as they said, thank you, I said, you know, don't thank me. You go on Facebook and thank the brothers and sisters because they are the ones that take the time out to make contributions. So we wanted to get that out the way, right out the gate. What I want to talk about this morning, it's going to be very simplistic. It's going to be very simplistic because this is the day of deception. This is the hour that the Messiah spoke about that is being prophetically fulfilled in the world. This is the hour. Because of this particular prophecy that is being fulfilled in the world, it's going to cause millions of people to die, whether they die physically or whether they die mentally. Either way it go, this is the hour so we want to look at a simplistic message so brothers and sisters can understand how to avoid some of these pitfalls. And this video is going to be based on another conversation that we had with a brother who seemed to be baffled at how men 
continue to hop from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place. They'll hop one place. You know, first they'll hop. Oh, I'm a deacon. Next, I'm a hop. I'm associate minister. Oh, I'm a pastor. Oh, I'm an apostle now. Oh, I'm a bishop now. Oh, I'm a... Oh, I'm going into Hebrew Israelites. So now I'm a hop from being all that in Christianity to I'm going to be a Kohen and, and I'm going to be a Moray. I'm a... This is what the young brother was asking. And I, you know, I'm pulling no punches on nobody. Anybody can come on these videos if they think that they got something to oppose. But I said it's like that because what you're dealing with is you're dealing with charlatans. You're not dealing with men that's genuinely seeking to serve the will of the Messiah. Brothers and sisters, you better be careful. You got to understand these things because God don't want us following men. He want us following him. By way of his spirit. And when men start keeping these things to their selves. They are moving into places of manipulation. On people. You ain't nobody's overseer. How you gonna oversee another man? Even in our, uh, even in our Islamic brothers. See our Islamic brothers don't use all of these different titles. But they use one title. Like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable, they used Honorable. But can a, can a man be Honorable that's sinful? Can a man be Honorable in the midst of his sin? Well, I understand what people mean, but these things put people, they separate men, they divide them, and they put them in a category that is separated from the commonwealth of the people. That the Most High don't operate like that. The Most High don't operate that. Let me tell you why. Using personal experience, I remember when I was in church, and they wanted me to be on the deacon board. Well, I declined. I denied that first off. But, you know, after a couple of years went by, and then they were persuasive. Well, you know, if the brothers wanted, you know what I'm saying, and I think it's an honor, you ought to go on. And, and so I went on and did it. I got on the deacon board. Next thing you know, everybody Deacon Milligan, Deacon Milligan. I used to tell my sisters, you know, don't be calling me no Deacon Milligan. I say, you know, and, and they would be excited because they see their brother moving into places what people think are prominent places to be in. Positions of, of uh, hierarchical positions of authority. And so that makes your parents proud. When you elevate it to a deacon or you elevate it to a preacher, that makes them proud. That's my brother. That's, and they and they excited to let people know that. Oh, this is my brother. He's a deacon in the church. Oh, this is my brother. And I used to say, hey, man, don't be telling nobody that. You know why? Because I understood that people have a type of respect, a God type of respect for what looks like a God type of authority. That's men that walk out front, men that handle the word of God. People have a respect for those men, but it's not really those men that they respect. They have a respect for a God type of authority that these men seemingly represent. And I used to tell my brothers and sisters, hey man, don't be calling me no deacon. Don't be telling nobody I'm no preacher. You don't be running around doing that. Here's the reason why. Because of the respect that people have for the most high, they will now respect, have respect unto that title. And what that title will do is it will stop you from ever being able to develop a genuine relationship with that particular individual. Because that particular individual has such a great respect for what you represent that when you come around, when the old folks used to come around and we used to be gambling and shooting craps and we see the old pastor coming down the street, everybody would raise up. It wasn't that the pastor didn't see us. And it wasn't a particular man, but we had respect for what the man did. Oh, this God's man, so we're going to get up. We're going to respect that. The crap game is stopped. The argument is stopped. Whatever was being done that wasn't right was stopped. You know what I mean? Hands would be hidden, and he would walk right on past and right on past. And as soon as he was gone, we right back at it, right back at it. You see... You can't build a, a, a solid relationship with anybody when you operating by a title. Why? Because if I'm a drinker, 
I ain't going to drink around the pastor when the pastor show up. Oh, put them beers up. Here come the pastor. We ain't going to be puffing no blunts. You know what? You know what? When the Kohen or the bishop or the apostle show up, uh, put them put them blunts up. Here come Bishop such and such. You see, Bishop such and such will never get to know you for who you really are unless you're conducting yourself as a brother. And this is what we're going to deal with on today. For brothers and sisters that are seeking to learn the scripture, that are seeking to learn God's righteousness in this world, you have to understand you will not learn God's righteousness in church. You will not learn God's righteousness in nobody's Sabbath day teaching class. Oh, I tell you what you will learn. You will learn how to conduct yourself according to the vision that some other man has for that particular organization, according to that particular geographical location. You will be able to come alongside and help another man build uh, his vision, which has absolutely nothing to do with the vision that God has for the life of the individual. So you don't want to waste your life. And you don't want to waste your time. No preachers used to tell people things like, oh, you need a covering. You need a cover. How are you going to cover me when you can't cover yourself? If you, if you think you can cover me, who's covering you? Well, if God's covering you and I'm his child, shouldn't he be covering me too? He don't need you to cover me. You don't have to answer to every question. You can't solve every problem. You can't make my sickness go away. You can't heal my broken heart. You can't hold me when tears is coming out my eyes. You can't help me with understanding why my children are acting the way that they're acting. You can't help me to mend the differences that are, 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 have, have come between me and my wife. You can't help me with the intermost details of my life? How you gonna cover me from something that you have completely no understanding of? How you gonna do it, bishop, apostle, coheen, pastor, preacher? How you gonna do it, Mr. Honorable? What can you, how can you cover me? And brothers and sisters, you better understand these things before you start thrusting your trust in men who will lead you away from God to further their own vision. That's what we told the young king. And I told him straight out, I don't apologize for what I say. I know what I say come by way of the Spirit. It can be backed up in the Scripture. It will be backed up in the Scripture. They're all charlatans who have rejected the word of the Messiah. And if you hanging around somebody and they running around calling themselves by these things, oh, pray, oh, bless you, shepherd, you under a charlatan. Oh, bless you, Bishop. You under a charlatan. Oh, bless you, Apostle. Oh, bless you, Brother Pastor. You are up under charlatans. What you should be waking up saying is bless the Almighty. Bless the Most High, the one that gave me life. Bless the name of Yeshua Hamashiach or Jesus the Christ. That's what you should be waking up saying bless. And while we got all of the brothers on the line, it ain't about no argument. Because people see these videos all the time. And they know that I'm right about what I'm saying. So they won't show up. Why is it that you only teach one part of the scripture. But you won't teach the part of the scripture that shows you yourself going against the grain. So we're going to look at prophecy being fulfilled. And many people are being deceived. Because they have no consecrated time in their life. They don't have time to sit down. They don't have the time to turn the TV off. They don't have time to shut Facebook and YouTube off. They don't have the time to just be quiet and be still. And ask the Most High to start speaking to them about where they're at in their life. They don't have time to do it. But they have all the time in the world and they'll make time for all this external superficial stuff when it comes to going to church on Sunday, when it comes to going to Sabbath day teaching, when it comes to going to feast days, when it comes going to going to the Islamic mass. But whenever you get through, when you come out of those places, your life have not changed, not one moment. None of those things can change the life. Only conviction that comes from the spirit of the most high and empowerment that follows the conviction changes a person's life. 
But if your, your head is hearing so many voices that you can't hear the small, still voice of the Spirit, you will never hear the conviction that God is convicting you about that's concerning not your church, not your Sabbath day, not your pastor, your bishop, Cohen, but it's concerning you. Conviction comes to deal with the individual about where the individual is at in their life. And if you got so many voices going on, so you can't never hear the conviction of the small, still voice of the Spirit that's coming to deal with you as an individual, you will never receive the empowerment to climb over the hurdles that you need to overcome in your life. So let's go to the scripture. And this is for my young brother, because we want our younger brothers to have a full understanding. And your understanding don't come from men. Your understanding gonna come from the one that you say that you put your trust in. And I want one person, if you can come over here and tell me. Now you got you got a, a whole lot of people out here, and we about to cover some of them. Matthew chapter 24. This is the prophecy. Let me get this fan. Y'all ready to go? Y'all ready to check out run and put a seven up in there. up in here already. Okay. We see y'all ready to go this morning. All praise and honor and glory to the Most High Heavenly Father. For all my brothers and sisters out there that's moving, we moving. We moving. When we start pulling away from men, we start leaning to the scripture. We see our big brother start showing us what the scripture is. You understand, I don't need my big brother no more. I got the scripture. I'm learning how to stand on my own two feet. I ain't no longer sitting down, lame at the gate of the temple called beautiful, shaking a rusty cup of some man's leadership. Now my brother done come and showing me how to operate with the scripture. Now my ankle bones done received strip. I'm up. Now I'm ready to leave. When I see the Most High's will start operating in my personal life, I'm no longer concerned about what they're doing in the organization. I see my own personal life flourishing. I see myself having an impact on my neighbors, on the people at my job, on my wife. She's looking at me different now. And on my children, they can see it's all of the things that dealing with me as an individual. Now I can see the Most High blessing me. When I was in church, I kept on having to beg for somebody's support. Beg for somebody's prayers. At Sabbath day teaching, I was always running around begging for somebody's understanding of some deep thing that didn't have no impact on my life whatsoever. But all praises, all honor, all glory be to the Most High Heavenly Father that raises up the life of the individual so that his light can now be a beacon of light in this dark, dim world. Okay, let's go. Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus went out. And Jesus went out. I am the good shepherd. If he is the good shepherd, then that means all others are not good. That's a line of distinction. He separated himself from everybody else. And Jesus, the good shepherd, went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him. For to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus went out. Now Jesus is in the place of religiosity. Now Jesus went out of the Sabbath day teaching. Now Jesus went out of the church. Now Jesus went out of the mosque. Then here come the disciples to show him The buildings of the temple. They showed them how beautiful it was. How much had been invested. Let me ask you a question. How can any building be made beautiful? Except the people. That's a part of it. Have been manipulated to take and fund their money to make it that way. Let's look at what the Messiah said. <coughs> and Jesus said unto them. 
You see, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So I don't care nothing about your church. I don't care nothing about your mosque. I don't care nothing about your Sabbath day teaching, your gathering spot for feast days. I care absolutely nothing about that. And I'll tell you the truth. The time is coming to where there won't be one stone left upon another. Because when you ain't got no buildings to go to, and you ain't got no people overseeing, and you ain't got no people standing out in front, every man going to be brought to a personal accountability for himself. And this is the lesson that the Messiah is trying to get the disciples to understand. It's because this is the bondage that the people have been up under. They had to bring everything to the temple. Everything had to pass through a man's hand. And the Messiah is telling them, man, I'm about to destroy all of this mess. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Well, tell us, Jesus, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign? How are we going to know when these things are happening? That's what they want to know. Okay, we can't even picture this place, beautiful place, the place where we come to bring your precious animals to get sacrificed, to atone for our sin. The place where we come to get judged by other sinful men. He said the place that the demons, the demons that had helped Solomon put together that was so beautiful and so royal and so regal that even the poor people would marvel at it as they walk in. He said, well, it's going to be destroyed. Tell us when are these things going to happen so we can at least know and we can have some type of sense of how we're going to prepare for them. Same thing he's speaking to the disciples. He's speaking to you, brothers and sisters, right now. And many brothers and sisters, you want to know. You need to know. You need to know what's going to be the sign of the destruction of all of these religious constructs and the destruction of every title that man can put on himself. What's going to be the sign? How are we going to know when we're close to these things happening? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed. You better pay attention, brothers and sisters. Take heed. That no man deceives you. Take heed. He didn't say take heed that no devil deceives you. He said take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ. The word Christ means anointed. It also means uh, uh, chosen one. So when you start talking about many coming in the name of Christ, you're talking about many people rising up in the world declaring that they are the correct way of living. They are the correct way of living righteously before God in this world. He said, take heed that don't ma no man deceive you. For many shall come saying, I am the anointed way. I am the chosen way. And they shall deceive many. Let me show you something. When he say many shall come, saying that they are the way, turn your TV on to CNN. And watch how many of them are telling you, this is the chosen way. This is the chosen way. We got mobile trucks out there ready to serve you. You can go anywhere ready to, this is the chosen way. They're going to deceive many people. You got, you got, look at all the churches out here. I am the chosen way. I am the chosen way. 40 years in church. Still don't have no understanding of the scripture. 40 years in church. Still going through the same thing. 40 years. Still dealing with the same. 40 years of no overcoming. 40 years of no empowerment. 40 years of being broken and dependent on somebody else's advice. Somebody else's money. A ride from somebody else. 40 years in a particular place. And they said, I am the way. I am the way. We can't say 40 years with our Hebrew Israelite brothers, but we can say about 
five to ten years. Five to ten years of arguing on Facebook. Five to ten years of trying to dissect everything that your old ancestor did. Five to ten years of walking in the wilderness. Five to ten years of trying to dress like they dressed 2,000 years ago. Talk like they talked 2,000 years ago. Have feast days like they did 2,000 years ago. Five to ten years of jumping on planes and getting in cars, traveling from city to city to fellowship, and you say that you're doing it in the name of the chosen way. But when you walk away from those things, you're still fornicating. We're still on drugs. We're still pouring down whiskey. We're still cursing each other out. We still ain't treating our women right. We still got single parent homes. We still got a high divorce rate. We still got a broken, dysfunctional family situation. In the last days, you better take heed that many men are going to become deceptive in this world. You got many that's jumping up. Many, many that's jumping up shall say, I am the way. I'm Torah only. I'm the way. How you going to be the way being Torah only when you had Torah, when you came out, out of Egypt, when you had Torah, when you went into Assyrian captivity, Babylonian captivity, Medio Persia captivity, Greek captivity. How you going to say that you... you uh, I'm torn, and this is the chosen way. Many in the last days shall come saying, I am the anointed way to the most high's righteousness. How you go, how's Torah going to be? You see, many, there are many different levels because the Messiah said, Take heed that don't no man deceive you. For in the last days, there shall be many. Your deception ain't just coming from Christianity. Deception is coming from 4,400 different world religions in this world that all declare that they are the way. The Buddhists declare he is the way. The Indian declare he is the way. Uh, uh, atheists declare they are the way. You got all these different world views and every last one of them declare that they are the chosen way. And you better take heed to yourself. You got to know for yourself. Because God going to judge every man by himself. He ain't judging no religious construct. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. That's why they're coming in his name, because he was the chosen one. He was the anointed one. He was the one that was prophesied about. So what he's saying is that many people are going to suppress many things that I have said. And they are going to say many things that I never told them. They are going to come in my name. They are going to do as though they're going to steal who I am. They're going to do what Maccabee said. Third chapter 48 verse. The heathen sought to paint the likenesses of their images. He said many going to come in my name. Name. So come in somebody's name is to use a form of a uh, supersessionism where you supersede the individual and now you put yourself in a place that you have no business being. Your pastor ain't the Messiah. Your bishop ain't the Messiah. Your Kohen or your Moray, your so-called apostle, they are not the Messiah. Many shall come and put their face on top of me and they'll come in my name and declare that what they tell you is the chosen way. But you better beware. Because when God start judging, he going to judge you. He going to judge your wife. He going to judge your children. He going to judge your house. He'll judge your job situation. He'll judge everything in your personal life. He not coming to judge the whole organization. So every individual need to make their righteous walk about themselves. And all of these other things, they are not needed at all because God gives every man the same opportunity. He is willing that no man would perish, but that all men would come to repentance. And that means if all men have the opportunity to come to repentance, that means that all men can receive a portion of conviction that comes by way of the Spirit. God ain't giving no one man everything. He give all of us something to work with. So, he said, many going to come in my name, and they going to deceive many people. 
Yep. It says, verse 11 of the 24th chapter says, And many false prophets shall arise, and they shall deceive many. And because the people are being deceived, iniquity, that means lawlessness, shall abound. And the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He is singular. He that endures to the end. When you go against the many people that are being deceived, there is a level of endurance that it takes when you get ostracized and when you get criticized and when people you get rejected for not going along with the crowd that's being deceived. Many. He that endure. He shall be saved. And when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world for a witness to all the nations. Then shall the end come when the gospel of the kingdom is preached throughout all the world. When the gospel of the kingdom, not Esau and Jacob, when the gospel of the kingdom, not is Esau the white man, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, not oh ancient Masoretic chapter, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, not Josephus and them, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. But seek the kingdom cheaply in yourself. Because that's where the Most High is dealing with. And when the gospel of the kingdom, when we make brothers and understand that they have a personal accountability to the Most High because he has a specific will for their life, we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom to make every man tap inside of the spirit that is inside of him that will lead him or drive him into God's will. For his life. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached, you can go out into the middle of nowhere and preach the gospel of the kingdom and make a man understand that you are the temple of the most high. His spirit is housed in you. His whole kingdom, everything that he desires for you to be is inside of you. If you can hear the small, still voice of the spirit, and when one hears the small, still voice of the spirit, their life begins to flourish. Because the gospel concerning the kingdom has been preached. What kingdom y'all talking about? We're going to take the kingdom. Huh? How are we going to get the kingdom? When are we going to take the kingdom? Now. When are we going to take the kingdom? Now. But how are we going to do it? By Shemima shop, Yahweh shop. You know what? It, listen. If you can't pay the rent. On a studio apartment. What make you think somebody about to put you in a $500,000 house? What sense does that make? What kingdom are you talking about taking when we ain't learned how to take the kingdom that's dealing with our own individual life? When I can't govern the kingdom of my house. When I can't govern the kingdom of my finance, be able to put gas in my car, have insurance and tax, pay lights, gas, and water, and be able to pay rent with no problem, that's my kingdom. If I can't govern myself or take that particular kingdom, what make you think that I'm going to take a kingdom that the streets are made out of gold? I mean, listen, man, we just got to keep it real, man. Ain't nobody about all that superficial nonsense. Don't nobody care about how many books you got, how much study you done done. Don't nobody care about none of that. What we're dealing with is the life of the individual. His life up against the will of God for his life. Not all that superficial stuff. Well, you can run and hide on Facebook. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when you leave your house. What's following you? Do you have a beacon of light 
burning and radiating off of you every time you come in contact with people? Do you have words of wisdom that can roll off of your mouth at a moment's notice? Pick one of your brothers up. Do you have money in your pocket to spare when you see somebody on the ground or in need? I'm not talking about what you look like after you just spent your money on a new garment and then ran out of town in a rental car pretending like your life is so great. I'm not talking about that nonsense. Let's keep it real. We're talking about the simplistic things. That's what we're talking about. Because that's where we want to be. You see, and all this religious stuff is killing us. Because when we look in the world that we're living in, we don't see that in our world. We see, when we look in your world, when I look in my world, you look in your world, I tell you what you see. You see the whole land full of whoredom. You know, you see the land full of a generation of girls that's growing up thinking that being a whore is the ideal thing to do. You got a generation of men coming up. Being a whoremonger is the ideal thing to do. Not loving each other. When you turn the radio on, every song that you hear permeating out of the radio is pure D wickedness as they talk about sex and sucking golf balls and blowing brains out and all of that. When you look at the videos that govern black folks, only thing you see is nonsense. Our people have been steeped into the greatest wickedness in this particular hour and those of us that have become religious because of constructs have stuck our heads in the sand and you're no better off than them. That's just what it is. I don't know what y'all see. I know what I see. And I'll be real with myself. And I'm real with my own personal life. I know the things in my life that I need to overcome. I know every time I look in the mirror, I see something. I got to get on my face and ask the most high. I need to overcome this. I need to get this right. Me and my wife ain't having good time right now. I got problems. I ain't spoke to my child in six months. Listen, life is real. Life is real. God want to deal with us as individuals. But all this organizational stuff is choking the life out of all of us. Talking about going through something where you need to move with the most high. I can't speak for other people. I can't do it. Since my children been born, I ain't never missed a birthday. I ain't never missed a holiday. I ain't never missed a school event. A pumpkin patch, a, a, a sixth grade day, I ain't never miss nothing. A college moment, I ain't never miss nothing. A band concert, been there every step of the way, all the way till they grown and still there. You talk about pain? Imagine being that kind of daddy. And because you being a daddy, you end up and talk to your child in six months. Said, what 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 do you do? What do you do besides being a parent? What do you do with your wife? What do you do with your wife? When you say one thing and try to get her to understand, but by the time what you say and get to her, it's something completely different. And before you know it, all hell them broke loose. How do you deal with those things? You see? That's what we're talking about. Real life. Real life. Why do I keep letting one man in after the other man? And then he didn't stay. And the only thing, every time one of them leave, they leave me with a package that they didn't want. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You can be Hebrew, Israelite. You can be Christian. You can be all that. But one thing you won't be able to deny is four babies' daddies. You won't be able to deny that every time a man comes, he leave a package that he don't want. You won't be able to deny that. Neither will a brother be able to deny that. I don't care how many books you got. You won't be able to deny the fact that you don't want to pay child support for the kid that you have fathered. See, that's why I'll be wanting to get off Facebook. That's why I ain't in nobody's pulpit. 
That's why I don't care nothing about nobody's speech days, nobody's savage day teaching. Because when you start dealing with people with truth, they don't want to hear that. Nah, they only want to be pretty. So the Messiah said, many people going to be deceived because they listening to the wrong people. You see? They listening to the wrong people. The Messiah wants us to listen to the voice of the spirit that he sent into the earth. That means, and it's real simple, this is the kingdom being preached to the people. This is why the world's still going. This message has not been preached to the people until the message becomes personal down to the very individual. The world ain't hearing the gospel of the kingdom. So, many people going to be deceived. Now let me show you. Let's go to now remember, he said many people, T.L. Monroe, did you get that tag I tagged you in yesterday? Dealing with the bank stuff? Yeah, see, see many people are going to be deceived on so many different levels, you know. It's about to be a whole lot of people that's been putting their trust in, in, uh, in, uh, in investment firms and, and banks and all those things, those people about to lose all of their money. It's people that have been putting their money uh, since they start working over the years. The fire department, the police department, all those things. They've been investing their money. as a portion of their money that comes out of their check from the time they start working that's designed to go to their retirement when they retire. The people is coming about to uh, stop working only to find out that they don't have no retirement money anymore. That they the government, the spent up or used the retirement money. These people's money that was, see, it ain't nothing that nobody can do. This is the, this is why the book said, take heed that don't no man deceive you. You got to be able to have some consecrated time and you got to be able to be quiet and be able to be still so that the spirit can show you the things that's coming into this world so that you'll know how to deal with them. God warned Noah. In a dream of things not yet seen. And Noah moved with fear and built the ark to save his house. Noah being warned of God in a dream. Noah being warned of God by way of the spirit that showed him things to come. He didn't take that lightly. He moved with fear and began to build the ark to save his house. And the only way you we got to have the same thing that Noah had. You see? But Noah had consecrated quiet time because he was in a place of hiding because of all of the things that was going on with the fallen angels. He was in a place of hiding. And when you heighten, that means that you have withdrew yourself from people. And any time you withdraw yourself from people, you enter into a quiet place. And any time you enter into a quiet place, it's just you and the Most High Spirit. And that is where the small, still voice begins to speak to us about the things that are pertaining to our lives. Not everybody else's. Now, we still along the lines of my brother that asked the question, and I told him that these title-wearing people out here, they are charlatans, and they are a major part of the deception. They are like a blockade that stands between God and his people. I don't, I, you know, I'm not concerned about what nobody thinks. I don't care how you feel about your pastor. It's still, I still mean the same thing. He stand in your way as a blockade. How are you going to get what God want for you when he's standing in the middle? You think he can tell you what God's will is for your life? Your so-called bishop, how are you going to get what God got for you when he's standing in the way? Your bishop can't even, you know, he got the same marital problems that you got. How he going? And you know what they say? They, they say they're doing the work of God. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to show you that you're not doing the work of God. You're doing the work of a charlatan. You're self-gratification and self-satisfying your own self. You ain't doing no work of God. 
you're fooling yourself. And you know how you're fooling yourself is because you won't heed God's word. He who God had sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit unto that man by measure. He who God had sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure. He who God had sent will show you what God's word got to say as the spirit leads him from place to place in the scripture. And John 8, 47 says, he who is of God hears God's word. How many? So let's see. How many brothers and sisters that say that they are of God are going to hear God's word? When the one God sin shows it to them. That's what we're going to do. Y'all still with me? Okay, my younger brothers and sisters, we all understand. You got to learn how to walk on your own feet. You got to have your ankle bones strengthened. You got to be able to walk on your own. Matthew chapter 23. Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples. Now, Jesus is speaking to the multitude. That's all the people that's following him. And he's speaking to his disciples. That's the men that he is training. Let's see what he's let's see what he said to them. Now, if if we got a disciple on this live video, put a seven up in there. What a disciple is. Is a disciple is anybody that is desiring to discipline themselves to follow in the footsteps or the instruction of the Christ. If you classify yourself as one that is fallen or one that desires to follow the instruction of Jesus or Yeshua, put a seven up in there. I want to see if it's anybody on the line and see who we working with. Because this is pertaining directly to you. And I'll wait. See if we got some disciples on the line. Oh yeah, we got some disciples on the line. We got some disciples on the line. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Then you understand, it's going to be your responsibility to preach the kingdom. And we just told you, because most people don't even know what it means to preach the kingdom. Let me show you what it means. Oh yeah, we still got them sevens jumping up there. Let me show you, you disciples, you disciplined ones. Let me show you what the Messiah meant when he said, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Let me show you the gospel of the kingdom that we need to be preaching to our brothers and our sisters. Because this crap that they preaching now ain't worth two cents. I'm preaching everybody need to come to Sunday school. I'm preaching. Hey, you got to keep these high holy days. Oh, I'm preaching. Hey, you know what? That stuff ain't doing nothing for nobody. Okay, so let's go. Let me show you the gospel of the kingdom before we go on farther. Let me show you. Let me show you here. Okay. Here's the gospel of the kingdom. Okay. You disciplined ones, this is going to be your responsibility when it comes to what you're going to preach to your brothers and your sisters and how and what the gospel of the kingdom being preached is. All right. Gospel of the kingdom. In everything 
that has life is God's law written. You'll find God's law in the grass and in the trees and in the rivers and in the mountains and in the birds of heaven and in the fish of the sea. But seek God's law chiefly in yourself. For I tell you truly that all things that have life are closer to God than the scripture which is without life. So God made life in all things that live that they might by the everlasting word teach the laws of the true God to man. For God wrote not his laws in pages of books, but in your heart and in your spirit. That's where God's kingdom is. In your heart and in your spirit. And when your brothers and sisters can understand, hey, if God woke you up this morning, then God's righteous laws of life are operating in you. The only thing you need to do is be able to have a comprehension of it. And that only thing that takes is quiet time. Because he said, seek these things, seek the kingdom in yourself. That's what the book say. Seeking in yourself, because once you're dead, you ain't seeking no kingdom in no dead vessel. But as long as you're alive, God's laws of life are operating. God's laws of life. Not no superficial man-made laws that got people doing all this superficial stuff, traditional stuff. You see, we get we so preoccupied with all this traditional stuff that we ain't even thinking about where God's righteous laws really are. Seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness. But see, His laws are in your heart and in your spirit. And from His laws, the Spirit make you aware of the life that God means for you to live according to the purpose that God purpose for you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, I sanctified you, I ordained you as a prophet unto the nation. God have a purpose for every individual on the planet, but if they never seek his righteousness in and of themselves by listening to the small, still voice of the spirit that dwells within them in their heart, they will never understand what God's will is for their life. And what profit is it for a man to gain the whole superficial world and die and lose his soul? Die without ever finding out why God created me? Why God woke me up this morning? What am I put in this world to do? What profit would a man profit to have a house, to have cars, to have all that and die without ever understanding what the spirit of the Most High meant to come out of his life when it came to kingdom building? Oh my good God Almighty, I know I just said something right there. I just said something right there. That was so bad, I can't even repeat it. <laughs> so, 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 so let me ask you a question. What charlatan wants you to know this? What charlatan? What man, what man in the organization wants you to be able to stand on your own two feet where you don't need him? What man want to tell you things? What, which one of these jokers going to tell you, you don't need to keep no feast days. You don't need to keep no feast to booth, no feast to week, no feast to tabernacle. You don't need to keep no, you, you, don't need to, you don't need to go to church on Sunday morning. You don't need to come to church on Sunday morning. You don't need to pay no tithes. Which one of them going to tell you the truth about a thing because you don't need none of it? Only thing you need is to understand that God's spirit is dwelling in you. And if your life is going to ever be morphed into what God purposed for you, you're going to have to pull yourself away from them things. So Jesus spoke to his disciplined ones and the multitude who was following. And he said this, the scribes, and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. Now, remember, the Messiah said, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
for many going to come in my name saying I am Christ. And they're going to deceive many people. Now, listen at this. The Pharisees and the scribes are another group of people. Remember, Jesus is teaching his disciples. And he's speaking to the multitude. So he's about to tell them something about a particular people that they're accustomed to seeing on a regular basis. He said, the Pharisees and the scribes, they sit in Moses' seat. Moses' seat represents the seat of authority. Because God gave Moses authority over the people. Because Moses was God's mouthpiece. But after Moses, now you had the Pharisees and the scribes doing with Moses' seat what Jesus said they was going to do to him. They shall come in my name. So they come and sit down in Moses' seat, which was the seat of authority over the people that God never gave them. Listen what he had to say. Y'all bear with me one second. Well, I'll call it back. Okay, so, 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 the seat of authority, God did not give to the Pharisees and the scribes. He gave it to Moses. Until this day, it is called Moses' seat. But he said, there is a particular people that are going to sit in the seat of authority. Listen at what he said. All therefore, whatsoever they tell you, observe it. That observe and do. He said, whatever one of these religious jokers tell you, you got to observe it. Because the most high, Jesus told you, take heed. Let's pay attention. When they start telling you all this stuff, somebody telling you, you need to pay your tithe, you need to observe that. You need to observe that and you need to find out if what they're telling you is true. When they're telling you you need to come over here and eat some lamb, you need to observe that. When they're telling you you need to keep this high holy, you need to observe that. When they're telling you all these different things, you need to be a regular at an organist. When they're telling you these things, he said you need to observe it. Because the ones that's telling you these things are the ones that's sitting in the seat of authority. They're the ones that people are listening to. He said, you need to observe it. He said, if you find it to be true, then you do it. He said, but do not. What's that? Do not after their works. For they say it, and they don't do it not. How you going to be somebody's covering? Tell me that. When God just told me, you can say some things that are true. And when I observe and I realize that they're true, hey, they become a benefit to me. But God also told me, or Jesus also told me, whatever I do, don't do nothing that I see you do. Because you'll say it, but you won't do it. Do you have any idea how many preachers and pastors will teach against adultery, only to commit adultery? Do you have any idea how many uh, uh Bishops, apostles, Kohens will tell you how you're supposed to care for the poor. Yet they have nothing for nobody and they spend everything that they get on themselves and on their own family. You see, they'll say it, but they won't do it. And I know that they fit into this category because if they're sitting in Moses' seat, then this is automatically happening. Forgive me for my excitement. But it's what it is. It is more of a righteous indignation than anything because these jokers are scientifically, technologically being charlatans over the Father's people. They have put themselves out there as though God put them there. God didn't tell you to sit in Moses' seat. Jesus is telling them. Jesus is telling you too. He said, these people, they sit in the seat of authority. They sit in Moses' seat. He said, whatever they tell you, you better listen close to it. He said, but whatever you get through, you don't find yourself doing nothing that they do because they are liars. They are superficial. They are hypocritical. And they have two faces. They'll say one thing and then they'll do something else on the back end. Yep.
He said, and they'll bind heavy burdens upon men's shoulders and grievous to be born. And they'll lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not remove them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen of men that they may make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Everything they do, they do to be seen. Do to be seen. Everywhere I go, I got to have the camera. Everywhere I'm at, I got to have the camera. Every feast day I'm at, I got to have the camera. Everything that's going on, every organization that's going on, I got to have the camera. I got to be seen. I'm in New York. I'm in Chicago. I'm in Ecuador. I'm in El Salvador. I'm in Africa. I'm in Israel. Everything that I do, it got to be seen by other people. I'm at this church. I'm at this church. I'm in Alabama. I'm in Louisiana. I'm in Atlanta. I'm at this. I'm at that. I'm at this. He said all that they do, they do to be seen before other people. And they love the uppermost rooms at the feast. And that's why they encourage all the other brothers and sisters to participate with this foolishness so that they can be seen before them. So that they can sit in the high place. So that they can all get together and sit around a table that's separated from everybody else. And they love to be greeted in the marketplace to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all of you are brother. Do you hear that? Rabbi, rabbi. Anything that's dealing with rabbi is dealing with a title. Oh, I've been elevated to pastor. I've been elevated to apostle. I've been elevated to bishop. Oh, I've been elevated to Cohen. Oh, I just, I just, somebody put the title of Moray on me. He said, you know what? Be not called these things. Why? Because you have one master. Even Yeshua Hamashiach, the promised child, the chosen seed. The anointed of the Most High. You only have one master. And all of you are brothers. What's wrong with just being a brother? What's wrong with just being a brother? Do you think if you close the door of your church... God going to stop doing his wonderful work among his people? Do you think that you're that important? Do you think that you are some kind of rescue person for God's people? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with just being an ordinary brother? Simple. Brothers and sisters, you better take heed. You better take heed because these brothers are not taking heed. And when you connect yourself to people that say that they're doing the will of the Father and they spit in the face of the Messiah, then you understand that these are charlatans. These are not men of God because if you was a man of God, you'll be doing what God tell you to do. They love the uppermost rooms at the feast. And the chief seats in the synagogue. We got any visiting pastors out there? We want you to come up to the pulpit. They love the chief seats in the synagogue. In your Sabbath class, wherever it is, you got chief seats always because you always got some joker having a desire to sit in Moses' seat, which is the seat of authority over people. This is, what, this is what the Messiah said. This is what the Messiah said. This is the instruction that he is teaching his disciplined ones. That when you see people operating like this, you do not be like them. Because they are not operating in my instruction. This is what the Messiah is telling the multitude, the people that desire to follow him. 
You desire to follow the Messiah. You don't follow him by going to nobody's church, going to nobody's organization, joining nobody's camp. You follow him by going into your closet and find some consecrated and some steel time. That's how you find them. He says, so they love being uh, the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace called Rabbi Rabbi. Hey, I, what I need, I need some brothers to come on. I need somebody to come on here and tell me that Jesus is not telling brothers not to wear, uh, tell me that he's not telling brothers not to wear titles. And I need somebody to think, everybody that thinks Everybody that believe, the brothers that wear titles, know that this scripture is in the Bible. Put a seven up here. If you believe that everybody that wear titles knows this particular passage of scripture is in the Bible, put a seven up there. He said, don't be called Rabbi, Rabbi. And the reason why, he said, you only got one master, that's me. If you only got one master, which is me, you think you can stand on the same plateau as me? What's wrong with you? He said, you are brothers. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father in heaven. Now, we don't never try to call no names or nothing, but we live life because life gives us examples that we can make the word clear. Now, we got some brothers out there. There's been more than one over the years. More than one over the years. We got some that call themselves pastors, shepherds, uh, bishops, all these things, apostles. This particular passage of scripture right here. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father in heaven. Now, we got some brothers that's walking around talking about this is my father in the ministry. Oh, this is my father in the ministry. Oh, this is my son in the ministry. This is my father. Let me ask you a question. And these are prominent people. Do you think they don't know that this scripture is in the Bible? And if they know that the scriptures in the Bible telling them not to do this, what makes you think, why do you think that they do it? You see, Jesus is making it manifest because he told you to take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name saying that they represent me, but they shall be doing the opposite. They shall not even do what I instructed them to do. And when you see these things in here and you see men conducting themselves like that, you know to get away from them. You can't become a part of the deception that they're putting on everybody else. I know what, I know what, I know what they don't fool with me. Not that I'm no better than nobody else because I ain't. Because I ain't. But when we start looking at the scripture, you see, they know these things. And I ask myself because I have had a conversation with many brothers. I got I got a son-in-law that's a pastor. You think I ain't had that conversation with him? That walk right away. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't wish no bad on them or nothing. They my, my, I love them. They, I love them that much. But you know what? Listen, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's what it is. See, the thing is, this ain't about friendship nor kinship. God's word ain't going to change for nobody. It ain't going to change for me. It ain't going to change for you. It ain't going to change for anybody else. And we got this word because it's based on what the Messiah told us about this hour of deception. Guess what else? Joe Biden, he sit in Moses' seat, the seat of authority. The WHO, they sit in Moses' seat, the seat of authority. The FDA, they sit in Moses' seat, the seat of authority. 
those anchor people on CNN and your local news. They sit in Moses' seat, the seat of authority. Wherever the seat of authority is, is a vision that goes out to the people. Those that sit in the seat of authority have already erred. There is no way possible that they can have the truth. So why would you be listening to anything on CNN? Why would you be listening to anything dealing with Joe Biden? Why would you be listening to anything with these alphabet gangs who sit in the seat of authority and then propel a false prophecy or vision out there to the people? Pharisees and the scribes sit in Moses' seat. In the last days, many false prophets shall arise. Pharisees and the scribes are the religious leaders and those that so-called interpret the law. A scribe was one that willed the pen and interpret the law. But Jeremiah 8, chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 8 said, How can you say that you are wise, pastor? How can you say that you are wise, bishop? How can you say that you're a wise apostle? How can you say that you're a wise Cohen or Moray and say, surely the law of the Lord is with you? Well, I'll tell you certainly, it is in vain. The pen of the scribe had willed it. And how does the pen of the scribe will the scripture in a way that's contrary to what God said? He wills it like when he won't do it and then try to justify it. He is the one that had willed the pen. How are you going to say that you are wise and that the law of the Lord is with you when certainly in vain he did it? The pen of the scribe made the people think that this was all right to be running around here calling me pastor, calling me bishop, calling me Cohen, calling me Mo. The pen of the scribe made the people believe that this wasn't against me when it really is. God desires a relationship with every man, every woman, every child on the planet. Just them and them alone. No outside influence, no preacher, no prophet, no Cohen, no nothing. Just you left alone with God on a hill wrestling with an angel till the break of day. Try to find and your purpose. Good God Almighty. Woo! You see, Jacob. 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 His life was full of havoc. His life was full of havoc. It was too many things going on. Too many voices being heard. God had chosen him to be great. He had chosen him to become the father of the many nations. He had chosen him for that. But it was too many things going on in his life. And it said, out on the hill, Jacob was left alone by himself. No wives, no shepherds, no footmen, no soldiers, no cattle, no nothing. He was left on the hill just by himself. There came an angel who wrestled with him about his foolishness. Get yourself together, boy. Get yourself together, girl. What's wrong with you? Quit following these people. I got a great purpose. He wrestled with the angel and everything had came to a close because when you get to the point to where, hey, I've been a part of this and I still don't know why God made me. Hey, I've been a part of this and I still don't know which direction I should go. Hey, I've been a part of this and I'm doing everything that me and me. They told me to be on the usher board. They told me to be on the deacon board. They told me to sing in the choir. They told me to light the candles on the menorah. They told me to put my fringes on. They told me to get me a Mitri hat and a head wrap. They told me, and I still don't know why God made me. I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. But when God gets you alone by yourself, that spirit will come and start wrestling with you and say, you're more than a conqueror from him that loved you. I have formed you before the mother's womb and gave you great purpose. I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Plans that I may prosper you and that you may be in good health even as your soul prosper. You see, God got to get you alone. He got to get you alone. When you get alone, Jacob wrestled with the angel until the breaking of day. When you get out there and you done tried everything else in your life and it done failed, all the people done let you down, everybody done ran off, and you get to the point where you done had enough, you say, Lord, I ain't got nowhere else to go. You can't let me go. I ain't letting you go. You got to tell me something. 
I got to be able to deal. I got to be able to deal with this wife. I got to be able to deal with this children. You got to be able to tell me something. I need the spirit operating in my life so I can make a set of better choices. He said, I ain't letting go until you bless me. And what, what God told Jacob was so profound, it's the same thing that he's trying to tell you. What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? My name is Jacob. Jacob means surplanter. Surplanter means trickster, con man, schemer, larcener, crooked, perverse. He said, my name is the schemer. My name is con man. My name is crooked. My name is perverse. My name is lost. He said, no longer shall your name be those things, but thou name shall be called Israel. For as a prince, thou have power with God and have prevailed over men. So the first half of his name was Israel. And Israel meant to wrestle or to wrestle or to prevail. That Jacob had wrestled with his brother Esau. He had wrestled. That's God teaching him his purpose. He had a purpose for his life all the time. He said, this name I give you going to help you to understand what your past was about. And this new, this other half is going to help you to understand what kind of future that you got to look forward to. So he said, the first half of your name is dealing with Isra. Isra means to wrestle. Isra means to prevail. He said, the first half of your name, which represents that past in you. He said, you wrestled with your brother Esau. You went over there. You wrestled with your own Uncle Laban as he tricked you out of your first wife. You wrestled with your Uncle Laban as he tricked you out of your cattle. And now you are running from your brother Esau and from your uncle. But now you met me on a hill and I will cause you to prevail. He said, so the first half of your name shall be Israel. The second half of your name shall be El because you are a prince and your future is a destiny of being a prince that has power with God. So now your name shall be called Israel. And the place that it happened was called Peniel. And the Peniel means, for I seen God face to face, yet my life is spared. Many of you don't think that you can see God face to face. But if it happened to our Father, it'll happen to us. You can see God face to face when His Spirit start moving. Crack your eyeballs open. Tears start running out. Fire start burning. You can see God face to face when you can feel those things. When the Spirit can take you back and show you every facet of your life. And God was there the whole time wooing you to the place that you you'll never find your purpose when you're Hooked up with all of these men. You ain't going to do it. People ask me, why are you so excited? Why are you hollering so much? I don't know. I can't help myself. It's just what it is. So, let me just calm down for a minute. Y'all get that? When God can get you alone. You can hear. And it don't take long. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't want to be alone. We don't want to be alone. We call being alone bored. It's not that it's bored. It's just that we know because we, uh, we know that we don't have to be alone long before the Spirit show up. You see, one of the worst things, one of the hardest things it is, is for a person to deal with themselves. For the hardest thing it is, a person, the only time people want to look in the mirror is when they try to make sure that their face is fixed right. That's it. Because you don't want to just stare and look in the mirror. If you stare and just look in the mirror long enough, the spirit going to show up. You see? And that's why we keep ourselves so occupied. We can't be alone. We can't be quiet because we can't deal with the conviction that's coming from the spirit. So I got to hurry up and cut the TV on. So I got noise to block it out. I got to hurry up and cut the radio on. I got noise to block it out. I got to get on Facebook. I got noise to block it out. YouTube, noise to block it out. And when I can't do that, I got to leave the house. I got to go find somewhere. I got to go to the park. I got to go to the night spot. I got to go so I got to stop the voice of the spirit. It's too, I can't allow it to get too quiet. If it get too quiet, I might find myself in the position that Jacob found himself in. Out there on the hill, all by himself. But it was the best thing that could have ever happened to Jacob. And it'll be the best thing that ever happened to any of you when you find yourself being 
quiet and still. You find yourself being quiet and still. Shouts out to you, Madonna. Yep, when you find yourself out being quiet and still. Quiet and still. Then, that's how the spirit come. The spirit come. Hey, boy, you know, you, you still ain't apologized for what you did over there. I know it's Facebook, you know what I'm saying, but you was real belligerent over there, and you ain't, you done blocked that person, and you done, you ain't, you done closed all your avenues, you, you can't even apologize, you don't even know how you, see, when you get quiet, you know what you said to your husband was wrong, you know you was dead wrong, you know, you, you didn't have no reason getting the attitude behind that, you see, when it get quiet, boy, I don't know, you know what, you sat there, you called your brother, you asked him for some money, and you know full well, that I had already blessed you with the money to take care of what you need to do. And you blew that off. You see, when it get quiet, you the one messed that up. And now you're making it like I'm not blessing you. And I'm just sitting here blessing you one in after other. Take care of the things that you need to take care of. And you steadily blowing off everything that I give you. Then you go to your brother and your sister. And you make it look like you're just doing bad. You see, I see you. You see, when we, when we quiet. You had no business laying down with the woman in the first place. Now you know. You, you, you mad at her. You got an evil. You got a root of bitterness because you got child support on you. And now you mad. You see, the spirit will start dealing with you. You, you run around here talking bad about that man. You know what kind of man that man was. Nobody told you to open up your leg. You did that. You did that. You, and you know you ain't got no business fornicating no way. So anything that comes out of it, it's your fault. And you, you want to make it like it's somebody else. You see, the spirit will deal with you in ways. If the spirit will deal with you. It'll block out all that nonsense. You can go to church and that nonsense can be covered up. Oh, we'll pray for you. Oh, we'll pray for you. But God said, I don't care what kind of prayer you send up. It ain't going to get answered because she's a liar in my presence. He's a liar in my presence. You see, when you get quiet, God will deal with you. The Spirit will deal with you. The Spirit will deal with you. But it ain't nothing more beautiful. It ain't nothing more beautiful than you hearing the conviction of the Spirit. And then eye waters start coming out. And you start confessing. Yes, I was wrong, Father. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, I made a mistake. Yes, I know I was wrong. Oh, yes, I'm going to do better. Oh, yes, I'm going to do this. Oh, yes, I'm going to do that. When you can get eye waters to start coming out because of your foolishness. Oh, yes, I'm going to do. Then you see the, the scripture being fulfilled. Blessed are they that mourn. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm having a hard time. Oh, I know I shouldn't have done it. Oh, I know I should do better. Oh, I know I said I wasn't going to do it, only to find myself right back there. Oh, I want up, Lord. Oh, I don't want to be raggedy. Oh, I don't want to be wretched. I don't want to be filthy no more. I want to be somebody that you can be proud of. Oh, help me, Lord. Oh, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Oh, let me become whatever you want me to be. Oh, teach me how to listen, how to hear your voice. Give me the power and the strength to be able to do what you're sending me to do. He said, when you get there, bless are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. God will bless and bless the one who's crying out, who can look at himself face to face in his eyes and declare what manner of a man that he is. That's the most high. But you got to be able to get alone. In order for that to happen. Because you don't want nobody. You see, you probably can't be like me. I don't care. I don't care what nobody think about me. I know where I've been. I done been in a gutter. I done been as low as you can possibly go. I done been so low that you couldn't even. It was almost like digging a ditch to build a house on. I done been just that low. I don't care what nobody think about me no more. Dimitri Milligan is a dead man. And died a long time ago. When we get on this face. Facebook and start dealing with this word. You dealing with a new man. You dealing with a man that only cares about his brother and sister hearing the right thing, getting taught the right thing, being exposed to the right scripture. You might not be like me. You might not be able to get on social media. You might not be able to cry in front of people. That's another reason why you got to get along. Because the tears won't come out of your eyes while other people are looking, while other people are watching. The words won't come out of your mouth while you got other ears listening. You 
can't tell everybody everything. Some people will take what they hear and then use it as a weapon against you. That's why you got to have consecrated time. You got to be able to get along and get in your club. Don't tell me that you're seeking to serve the Most High when you won't do it the way that He said do it. I'm going to read one more scripture. And then I'm going to end the video. Give me one second. Ah, right. Ooh, Jack. Me and my big brother, both of us. But then again, I tell people all the time, I have a kindred spirit. With Jeremiah. That's why my name is Jeremiah ben Yehuda. And Jeremiah was classified as the weeping prophet. And I, you know what? And I weep. That's all it is to it. I weep because what comes out is genuine. I'm not looking for nobody's money. I'm not looking for nobody's favor, nobody's friendship. I'm not looking to be popular in no popularity contest. I have a genuine heartfelt desire to see the things that the Most High have done for me transfer into the hands of some of the brothers and sisters so that they can become benefactors of many of the same things, namely the move of the Spirit that will help your life to be morphed into what the Most High wanted to be morphed into. And that is my mission right there. And so when it comes down to things that would lead people away, we want to show you the scripture. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, say that they represent me, and they shall do just that. He said, many false prophets shall rise in the earth, and they shall deceive many people. And this is the whole thing. We're trying to show you how it is that they're going to do it. And how it is that they're doing it. What the Most High is requiring. So I'm going to read this passage for you. Let's go. Let me get this. We're going to go to... The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. They that sit in Moses' seat. See, they that sit in Moses' seat, the seat of authority, are ones that, so to say, have influence over, over God's people. And I expect them, they get angry at me all the time. You know, just a few months ago, some of the brothers that sit in Moses' seat, they got real angry at me. Did a stream of videos trying to make it look like I was saying something that I wasn't saying. Just really drug me through the mud. You know what I mean? But that's what's going to happen. That's what happened. In it. It, happened, it happened to the prophets. I had to tell the brothers. I got King Rashard on the line. He ready to jump on the plane somewhere. I said, boy, go sit down somewhere. I don't need you to defend me or protect me. Most High going to protect his own. People are supposed to do what they do so that they can manifest whatever God wants. To be manifested before people's eyes. You see? So people get mad at me all the time. You know, this ain't the first time pastors going to be mad at me. Mad at me. I'll run, I'll run right in church and tell them the same thing. Tell the people the same thing. I get in the pulpit and preach that lesson. Coming out of Matthew 23rd chapter. What you think going to happen? Well, it's the reason why they won't, they won't let me come in church and preach. They don't know what I'm going to preach. What I'm going to preach is going to be dealing with the direct individual. Coming from up under your leadership. You see? It's the reason why they don't invite me to come to the feast days and stuff like that out of town no more. It's the reason why they don't do it. Because you can't pacify. Couldn't pacify nobody with a genuine motive. You can't buy nobody off. Simon. When he seen Peter and John. Laying on hands, teaching the people how to tap into the spirit, and they was receiving a Holy Ghost. Simon the sorcerer offered to get offered them money. Let me buy the gift. Offered them money. What do you need? Your money perished with you. 
every brother out there that have ever had a type of motive where you thought for one minute that it would work. Your money perish with you. And though you may be severed, we understand that there will come from amongst you that it might be made manifest that they were never of you. For had they been of you, no doubt they would have continued. That's the conversation that me and my brother had when he wanted to understand. He said, of all the people that were surrounding you, I said, yep, yeah, you were the only one that's left. I said, but I don't look at the people. I look at what God doing. I said, you ought to feel great. I said, what a wonderful thing to know that God would send one all the way across the country just to get you. Because he knew the rest of them would not be around. Your money perish with you. I make my own money. I pay my own bills. I don't have to beg nobody for no money. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of, not, of being a brother. The beauty of being a brother is I can be a brother. If I want to let my sin hang out, who can tell me anything? That's the beauty of being a brother. Because brothers are not judgmental with one another. Brothers understand that we are all brothers. And brothers, all brothers have all things in common. Let me show you how it got like that. And we're going to end the video. And then, big bro, you can uh, head on this direction. Oh, I had to make sure you wasn't already out there. Because last time I was making a video, you were sitting outside. Okay, we're going to go. Now. Y'all still taking heed. Remember where we started. We started taking heed that don't no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name. So we have to identify those that that represent his name. And this is what it is. Those that's representing his name or those that walking by titles that he said they shouldn't walk by. Let's go here. We're coming out of the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, Lection 44. We're going to pick up reading at verse 3. And Yeshua Jesus said to them, Blessed are you who believe. Blessed are you who believe. For flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. But the Spirit of God which dwelleth in you. What he's saying to the disciples, he's saying to us. Because we are the offspring of those that will receive the Spirit. He said, blessed are you who believe. If you are a believer in the Messiah, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. It is the Spirit that's in you that caused you to have that type of belief system. All truth is in God. And I bear witness unto the truth. I am the true rock. And on this rock do I build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And out of this rock shall flow rivers of living water to give life to the people of the earth. You are chosen. You are my chosen twelve. In me, the head cornerstone, are the twelve foundations of my house built on the rock. And on you, in me, shall my church be built. And in truth and righteousness shall my church be established. And you shall sit on twelve thrones and send forth light and truth to all the tribes of Israel after the Spirit. And I will be with you even until the end of the world. But there shall arise after you men of perverse minds who shall through ignorance or through craft 
suppress many things which I have spoken unto you. And they shall lay to my charge things which I never taught, sowing tares among the good wheat which I have given you to sow in the world. Then shall the truth of God endure the contradiction of sinners. For thus it hath been, and thus it will be. The time cometh when the things which they have hidden shall be revealed and made known, and the truth shall make those free who were bound. One is your master. All of you are brethren, and one is not greater than another in the place which I have given unto you. For ye have one master, even Christ, who is over you, and with you, and in you. And there is no inequality among my twelve, or their followers. All are equally near unto me. Strive ye not therefore for the first place. For ye all or first, because ye all are the foundations, foundational stones and pillars of the church, built on the truth which is in you. And the truth and the law shall establish for all as shall be given unto you. Now, tell me, tell me, where is a place for your pastor? For your bishop, for your Kohen, for your Moray. Where's the place for any so-called religious leader, any pharmaceutical, any scribe? Where's the place for them? You tell me, where's the place? Where's the place at? Where is the place at? You see the deception that's in the world now? I can read this. You can send this video to all these brothers and they're going to cut it off immediately. You know why? They're going to cut it off and say that they serve in the Messiah. Let me read this again. And you shall sit on twelve thrones and send forth light and truth to all the twelve tribes after the Spirit. And I will be with you even unto the end. See, they're going to send forth truth and life after the Spirit. That means that the promise was that the twelve would receive the, the Spirit so that they can be witnesses. Now listen, because this is real serious. They are only able to do what the Messiah instructed them to do when they're operating by the Spirit. This is what he said that the disciples was going to be doing. But you have a group of people out here, many people out here in the world that say that they represent the Messiah, but they are not operate after the Spirit. Because what they're doing operating contrary to the Word. Now let's read it again. It says, But there shall arise after you, after the twelve apostles. He said, There shall arise after you men of perverse minds, who shall through ignorance, that's because some people don't know. You got some pre preachers in the pulpit. You got some people in camps. You got some people over here. They don't know. They're ignorant of these things because they have only learned the things of the person that walked before them. So there are many things that they don't even know when it comes to the scripture. So some through ignorance and others through craft. That means that some are going to be manipulative. And these are the brothers that we're talking about. The ones that you know know these things are in the scripture. Those are the manipulative ones. Those are the ones that's moving by craft to manipulate people for whatever it is that they're trying to get out of them. They're the ones that's operating like this. Some, the perverse men shall arise after disciples who's, who through ignorance or through craft shall suppress many things that I have spoken unto you. What is he speaking to us in this passage? He is speaking to us in this particular passage about unequality. Men being separated from the commonwealth of the people to make themselves look good. Men being separated to sit in Moses' seat, the seat of authority. He said, no, that comes from the mind of perverse men who are moving by craft. They shall suppress many things that I have spoken. What he's spoken. 
Be not called Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbin, Rabbani. Be not called by these things. Because you only have one master. He said that's what he said. But, but they suppressing the many things that he has said. And then laying things to his charge that he never said. Oh, I'm pastor such as Jesus didn't tell you to say that. Well, I'm bishop such as such. Jesus didn't tell you to say that. Why? Well, well, you know what? I'm Cohen some such. I, I, you, Jesus didn't tell you to represent him like that. You have suppressed what he told you. He told you don't do it. You have suppressed it on one end, and now you're laying something to his charge that he didn't tell you to say. And you got everybody thinking that you're some type of man of God when you're really being made manifest as a charlotte. Fill up the measure of God's wrath. Serve him a double portion. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I gather you together, gather you pastors, gather you bishops, gather you cohens, gather you so-called prophets as a hen gathers her chicken, but you declare, we don't want to be gathered, we don't want you to gather, he said, but you would not. Thou who kill and stone the prophets that I sent to you to correct you from this foolishness. I'm going to finish reading this, and then I'm eating the video. But after you, men of perverse minds, who shall through ignorance or through craft, they shall suppress many things which I have spoken unto you, and they shall lay things which I never taught. So in tares among the good wheat which I have given you to sow in the world. Then shall the truth of God endure the contradiction of sinners. For it had thus been, and thus it will be. But the time cometh, the time cometh when the things which, have, which they have hidden, they shall be revealed, and they shall be made known. And the truth shall make those free who were bound. One is your master, and all of you are brethren. And one is not greater than another in the place which I have given unto you. For ye have one master, even Christ, who is over you, who is with you, and who is in you. And there is no inequality among my twelve or their fellows. All are equally near unto me. Strive not therefore first place. For ye all are first, because you are the foundational stones and the pillars of the church. Built on the truth which is in me and in you. And the truth and the law shall be established for all as it shall be given unto you. Verily, when ye and your fellows agree together, touching anything in my name, I am in the midst of it with you. So, so you see how the Messiah feel about that. So any brothers and sisters that... Don't understand that the Most High desires you. You. Not your church. Not your Sabbath day teacher. Not your pastor. Not your none of He want you. And only you. So, let's start challenging ourselves. With some quiet time. You see how the video. You think the video can be done. If I got the TV on. With noise in the background. I, I wouldn't be able to hear the spirit. You see it's the spirit. That comes. Through this quiet time. That teaches my mouth what to say. It's the spirit. That gets my mind. And make me know. Okay turn and go to this scripture. When I sit down. Y'all don't see no notepad. You don't see no pencil. You don't see none of that. When I sit down, there is nothing. It is me. It is quiet time. But I can hear the Spirit. And as long as I can hear the Spirit, it's going to lead me where I need to be to make a video. It's going to do that. And if it do it for me, it will do it for you too. And whatever it is in your life that God means for you to be doing, it takes some quiet time. And so find a way to make some quiet time for yourself. Peace and blessings be upon all of the brothers and sisters out there in social media land. 
no matter what you call yourself, no matter what walk of life that you come from. Try and see. I wonder how hard it would be for somebody to step down. I stepped out of a pool pit. I stepped out of a pool pit. I got ordination license up there. I got license up there. I got a license for people to call me certain things. You understand what I'm saying? And I done been called everything. And I could have easily had a church somewhere because it ain't taking nothing. I've been a businessman opening up businesses all my life. It was a small thing. That I, but you, I stepped out of the pulpit and when I did, I got my brothers together and I said, you know what? We brothers. We brothers. Y'all don't call me no Reverend Milligan. Don't call me no Reverend nothing. Don't put no title to me. I don't want no title. I just want to be a regular brother because that's what, the, that's what, you know what? Them brothers had double respect for what I had done. Was it hard to do? It was a little bit hard because, you know, you was prideful. You know what I mean? And, but ultimately... It don't make no difference how difficult it is. When the Spirit convicts you about something, and you've got the Scripture staring you right in the face, you either do it or you don't. And if you don't do it, then guess what? Now you're going to become what he was talking about. They say it, but don't do it. So, how hard do you think it would be for a man to have attached pastor to his name to go back and tell his people not to call him pastor? But to treat them like they're another brother. How hard do you think for the one that got bishop on his name to go back and tell the people, you know what, I ain't got no business being called no bishop. I ain't no great person like that. You know what I mean? And the bishop is, is, is taught from Roman Catholicism that these are they that carry the mantle of the 12 apostles. Well, that's foolishness because all of us carry the mantle of the 12 apostles that believe. I wonder how hard it would be for the one that called itself an apostle, assuming lordship over churches and all that. I wonder how hard for it would be for him to step down out of that high seat and tell the people, hey, you know what, I I'm renouncing the title apostle. I'm renouncing the title apostle, and I ain't no longer going to be no overseer over no church. And I wonder how hard it would be. I wonder how hard it would be for him to do it. But see, they're not going to do it. And the Messiah told you why they wasn't going to do it. He said because they love the uppermost rooms at the feast. They love to be greeted. They love to be seen of men. They like white, whitewashed uh, tombs. They look beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones. He said they'll say it. They ain't going to do it. They'll tell you what you need to do. They'll focus on money instead of focusing on the needs of the people. He said they are hypocrites all the way down. Hypocrite, 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 hypocrite. But the problem is, is that these hypocrites got thousands of people following them. Why? We don't get mad at it because it's prophecy fulfilling itself. Jesus is the one that said, many was going to be deceived. But there is a select few in the earth that have a genuine desire to follow him that will respond to his word. So he said, take heed and don't let no man deceive you. And then he shows you what the men that are deceiving people are out here doing. And when you see people out here operating like that, then you can avoid the deception. All praise, honor, and glory be to the Most High Heavenly Father, His glorious Son, blessing for His Ruach Kakadesh, which is the Holy Spirit. This is indeed a great day to be alive. It is a day that the Most High have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it.